One of the books that I have been reading to kind of feed myself in preparation for the discussions on the Paris and the Disciple Maker Index is a book called The Laity and the Life of the Councils, The Church's Mission in the World, written by a theologian by the name of Hans Urs von Balthasar, a uh, Swiss theologian, good friend of uh, John Paul II, as well as uh, uh, Pope Benedict. Um, tends to be a little dense in his writing, but I'm finding this book to be very, very fruitful. And in it, he talks about the hour, um, concrete direction that a person follows uh, in a particular moment of time. And I think we, that's exactly where we are, where we find ourselves. We are in a season that you could kind of describe, describe as the hour um, that uh, we are trying to discern what the, the will of the Lord is and the direction that we are to go in, a, in the, the parish. And to add a kind of a framework, he looks at the, the th what are known as the, the three councils, uh, poverty, chastity, obedience, uh, or uh, as he kind of uh, talks to them, uh, virginity, uh, poverty, and obedience. And what does that look like exactly? In terms of virginity, uh, he uses Mary as the model, uh, a woman who had uh, uh, undivided bodily readiness to be uh, put her, uh, herself and her body <clears throat> at the fruitful discretion of the Holy Spirit. In terms of poverty, it is realizing uh, that uh, to be content with what you have been given, realize that everything that you have, it does nothing, or nothing that you have belongs to you. It all belongs to the Lord. And it must therefore be placed at the will and the disposal of the Father. <clears throat> Excuse me. Finally, in terms of obedience, <clears throat> is looking continuously at the Father in order to see the light of his will and allow that light to illuminate your way. Uh, it's an attitude uh, for looking at the experiences that you had in the past to read the signs of the times in the present, to ask for the prayers of the pious, listen to the predictions of the, the prophets around you, and to move according to the will of the Father in the situation in which you find yourself. He calls this a comprehensive plan of the Father. And he says this comprehensive plan must take priority in the immediately situation over anything that you might want or you might need, even if that promises success. And I think that's a really key point to what we, when we start coming into some of these discernment meetings, uh, is not to come in saying, well, this is what I want, or this is what I think we need. If you haven't engaged those counsels, if you haven't brought them the prayer and, and placed yourself like Jesus Christ at the disposal of the of the of the father then what we're doing here is basically we are building a house on sand and we are using an almost consumeristic model to come in and say these are the things that i want to pull off the shelf from these meetings because this is what makes me feel good um he says that's sharp contrast the the the, uh, the plan of the father is in sharp contrast to the false prophet's own spirit one final aspect that he talks about, and he talks about, uh, and, and, and this is one of the really great things about what we're doing. Um, he says, what always drives, everything that drives the Holy Spirit is always done within the context of the comprehensive bosom of the church. Great language there. Uh, together with all of the saints who are alive and all of the saints in heaven as well. <clears throat> Any discernment of the comprehensive plan of the Father embraces the church. Uh, and it makes a concrete rule, almost like the rule of Benedict or the rule of Francis, that pulls in the spiritual and the ecclesial aspects of the body of Christ. And it is through that that you will find what it is that the Holy Father will approve. It is a mode of participation, an indispensable guarantee that the individual does not confuse his own spirit with God's spirit 
and equates his own spirit with the true spirit of the church. Really great, great language here from, from Hans, and I think it's a, it's a good thing to kind of just take a step back and before we start talking about what we want to do and what we think we need and, and, and how we're going to move forward is to really sit there as Mary did and as Christ did and put ourselves at the disposal of the Father and have that Father within the context of the church uh, tell us what it is that he's thinking and move forward along that mode of operation. Enjoy your day. Have a great, uh, have a great uh, 